Hi, I'm Oscar van Deventer and this is the Geert 5x5, also known as the 5x5 Gear Cube. And my video of today will be about uh, Chinese knockoffs. Uh, as we all know, unfortunately, uh, puzzles and toys are knocked off in uh, China. It is the way uh, at this moment the world economy uh, works and it's quite unfortunate. But usually it is mass produced puzzles that are uh, copied by other mass producers. This is a case, and maybe it is even uh, the first uh, recorded case, where a puzzle got mass produced and it was knocked off by, from a 3D print, a 3D print from Shapeways. So this will be my uh, story uh, about the investigation about this puzzle. Let's first uh, look at this uh, product. One of my Chinese friends uh, sent me an email. Hey Oscar, look what I found. There is this puzzle being sold in uh, China and it looks exactly like your geared uh, 5x5x5. So let's unbox it. And there we are. And yes, the puzzle that we see here is an exact copy of my geared 5x5x5. This took me by surprise because I hadn't, didn't have a clue that anybody was working on it. And if we look at how it works, well you can see that on my other YouTube video. It works exactly the same way as my geared uh, 5x5. It's a gear cube that is a 5x5 and it gears in all uh, directions. So, then the question is, what had happened? Uh, it's obviously a knockoff, but who knocked it off and how was it knocked off? So I posted a question at the Twisty Puzzles forum uh, for information about this uh, puzzle and several uh, friends of mine uh, uh, from China, they responded and they dug up all kinds of information. First of all, the knockoff uh, version that you see here, uh, I can't, uh, can't read the Chinese, but the producer is a producer that has a Chinese name and in uh, English it's Illusion Cube. Okay, so now we know who is the producer. But how did it get produced? Was it a parallel invention? Well, for sure it was not a parallel invention because it's way too identical uh, to the uh, original. So, was it copied from my videos or from my uh, uh, Shapeways uh, STLs? Well, again, the details are very good. So, the, um, this is something you couldn't copy from this video. Well, think about it. You are looking at it. Uh, can you make an exact copy just from these uh, photos? No, you can't. And also the STLs, they have been uh, safeguarded by Shapeways. And since it's in everybody's interest to keep these uh, secure, I'm pretty sure that, uh, or very sure, that the STLs are safe. So what are the other um, options? Uh, well, as it turns out to be, I have uh, compelling evidence that this one was uh, copied from a Shapeways 3D print. So let me take out my uh, original gear cube. This is my uh, original geared 5x5. And uh, what you are seeing here is from my original prototype, I've swapped pieces with the knockoff. And uh, what you see is, it is an exact fit. And if I look at the details, I see that even some non-functional details uh, of pieces, there's a little bump here that is uh, actually not doing uh, anything, but is the, it's there as, uh, well, uh, a design uh, feature that happened to be there. And uh, in the copied pieces, I could see that exact same feature copied. So my conjecture is that somebody bought uh, a Shapeways uh, 3D print went through all the effort to make a 3D scan um, and reproduced this puzzle. So the next question is, which Shapeways 3D print uh, got uh, copied? Well, that is very easy. Since of these 3D prints, only two of them have ever been produced. 
One of them is in my hands, so that one is not the one copied. And the other one has been uh, bought by a customer in uh, uh, the Los Angeles area. I will not uh, disclose her name, so I will call her Customer X for privacy reasons. I'm uh, very sure that uh, Customer X is a, uh, a genuine buyer. And um, she, at the time, she was running a web page that is doing overseas purchases for people from China. So my conjecture is that a person from China asked her to order this from Shapeways. She bought the parts and uh, next she uh, shipped it to uh, the person who bought it in China. Um, I have uh, sent her an email. Uh, we, we had already contact with each other at the time of buying because there were some hiccups uh, in the purchase procedure. So we had been in communication with each other. So I asked her um, what she could tell me about this. But uh, as her website is now uh, no longer working, uh, I was no longer able to uh, reach her. But anyway, we now understand uh, how this thing came to China. So what happened in China? Well, this is uh, interesting. One of my Chinese friends did a uh, patent search and he found a patent that is exactly this thing. The name on the patent, uh, you may not be able to read it, but it's uh, pronounced something like Duai Xian or so. But uh, anyway, um, apparently a Chinese person has taken the effort of copying all these parts, applying for a Chinese uh, patent, you can find it in uh, Google Patents and elsewhere, put his own name on it and claim it as his own invention. Interesting. Um, so uh, my friend contacted his other friends in China and the response was, oh, it's him again. So apparently the person who uh, knocked this uh, uh, puzzle off has done uh, similar tricks uh, before. So knowing that the puzzle had been knocked off, then the question was for me, what to do next? So I tried to contact uh, Illusion Cube, who is the producer, and with the help from my Chinese friends, who knew a friend who knew a friend who could contact the factory, um, I could get into uh, communication. And essentially they said, uh, well, that they would be willing to put my name on the puzzle, to pay me uh, royalties, etc. So far the negotiations with Illusion Cube, I assume it was Illusion Cube that I was talking with at the other side, went well. But of course, when we're, we're talking about uh, drawing up a license agreement, well, there should be a name on the license agreement and a law. And this was where the negotiation stopped. Apparently, this was not possible. So, since the puzzle is of a reasonable quality, I wanted the puzzle to be available uh, for people who really want it. Uh, okay, there, is, uh, there are quite some comments about uh, the turning quality. Some of them turn better than others, but uh, my Chinese uh, friends assured me that the quality at least was uh, reasonable and that, uh, well, it's a genuine product. So the action that I took was so-called legitimization. And that is, you find a wholesaler who buys a batch of the puzzle and he puts my name on it. Uh, so. I uh, shall show you what a legitimized product looks like. It is exactly the same product, but now it has my name on it. And also uh, the producer uh, or the wholesaler is um, paying me uh, the royalties. And actually he gave me uh, some uh, samples uh, that you see here. So the through the legitimization, uh, it was done by the company called uh, Cube Twist. So uh, this is their logo. So uh, people can now buy the legitimate product uh, from Cube Twist. It is identical, of course, to the illegal uh, knockoff. But uh, now at least I'm getting uh, some recognition and a bit of uh, royalty. So yeah, um, this is uh, in a nutshell uh, the story about uh, how a Shapeways 3D print got knocked off and mass produced in China. And that's quite uh, an interesting story, I think. That's why I'm sharing it with you. But there's still one thing that is on my mind, the question of the legitimization. 
have I done a good thing to add my name to a product that I designed that was knocked off and then afterwards putting back my name on it again and make it available uh, to others. Is there anything else that I could I have uh, done? Um, going to court, well, the turnover of these puzzles is uh, not that much. So I'm, I'm really seriously doubting, should I have ignored it? So this is my question to you. What would you have done in a case where you had invented a puzzle and found it uh, knocked off in China? Thank you for watching.